here to talk to you guys about one of Colombo's maddest secrets, and that is its wetlands. Can anyone raise their hands if they've been to a wetland or seen a wetland, heard of a wetland? Oh, nice. Okay, I was not expecting that. Cool. So, for those of you who don't know, a wetland is basically, simply put, the middle ground between water and land. You can think of it as like a giant sponge that will soak up any water that's either flowing past it or flowing on top of it, and it will retain and store this water either seasonally or permanently. And most of these wetlands in Colombo are overlooked and misunderstood. But what, if a, but what a lot of us don't know is that they have a very rich and deep history to our city. Now, let's go way back, ancient times, right? Colombo started off as a tiny little fishing village right along our coastal areas. And they were surrounded, this village rather, was surrounded by a network of natural wetlands made up of mangroves, swamps, lagoons, and even paddy fields. And these provided the people living in the city, or rather the town, I'm talking about a village here, right? They provided the villagers fertile soil, for flowing flood protection, and fresh water. Now, it's the 1500s, the Portuguese have arrived, followed by the Dutch and the British. And with them, trade boomed. But what I mean by trade is actually the exploitation of our natural resources. And like every good colonizer, in order to take things out of a country, you need to bring people in, right? So a lot of our wetlands were cleared for these people and roads to shuttle things out and also buildings and other infrastructure. And as the city grew, our wetlands were pushed towards the margins and the edges of the city. Now, what we need to remember is that they never really completely disappeared. Now, fast forward to 2010, Colombo is enjoying rapid urban post-war development. We're getting things like roads and new buildings and you name it, we're getting it, right? And all of us are really happy. And these misunderstood, pushed away, forgotten wetlands are being cleared for all this new development. Now, the first monsoon hits, and all of us are kind of in the middle of our first one, and then the second one hits, and Colombo's flooding is getting worse and worse. It's so bad, in fact, that most of the city is now underwater, or rather many parts of it, including our parliament. And it's then, when looking at the flood damage costs of the year, which amounted to about 100 million USD, which was approximately 1% of the GDP that year, but the government went, uh-oh, we really need to rethink flood management. And after much deliberation, the Metro Colombo Wetland Management Plan was implemented in 2015. And underneath this plan, 19 square kilometers of Colombo's wetland habitats are being protected and slowly rehabilitated. Then, with all of this wetland protection that's happening by government and non-government stakeholders, Colombo is awarded, along with 16 other cities around the world, something called Ramsar Wetland City Accreditation. And we, or rather, this is considered the Michelin star of wetland conservation. And Colombo is the only capital city to get this award. We became a case study to show the world that with rapid development, protecting natural habitats is still possible. And yes, Colombo's wetlands do hold significant international value, but we need to remember that this isn't just about check boxes and shiny badges and good governance and policy. These wetlands are alive, and they're extremely important 
for all organisms that live within it and around it. Now, raise your hand if you know where this is. Oh, nice. Ah, awesome audience. Okay, so again, those of you who don't know, this is the Badegana wetland. It's in Kote. And basically what happens is you walk through the Florida Everglades, and then you end up in Jurassic World. It's incredible. I recommend it to everyone. So this just goes to show that you're not a love. Sorry. You can't, you don't have to leave Colombo to see incredible scenery like this. You just, you know, drive your car 10, 15 minutes down the road and you're going to end up in a place like this. But the coolest thing about Colombo, in my humble opinion, and I might be very biased here, is the fact that the city is home to 277 species of animals and 252 species of plant life, out of which 8% are endemic, which means you can't find them anywhere else in the world, let alone the country. So Singapore isn't the only city that has otters. We've got them too. I mentioned Jurassic World, and we've got one of the most prehistoric living dinosaurs on the planet, the saltwater crocodile swimming along our canals. We've also got jackal roaming around, and the jackals we have are a subspecies, so very, very cool. And then, of course, we've got something that no other city in the world has, and that's our fishing cats. And this is a species that I work on. Fishing cats are an endangered species under the National Red List of Sri Lanka, and they're a vulnerable species under the global IUCN Red List. This means that within the next 15 to 30 years, this species can go completely extinct if they're not protected. They're also a nocturnal species, which means they're active at night, but they will kind of wake up and walk around if they're feeling a little peckish during the day. They're also they look a lot like a leopard, the size of a street dog, weighing in at about 16 kilos. They're pretty big. They're also semi-aquatic, which means that they will... Sorry, <laughs> that scared me. Which means that they will dive into the water to catch fish. Can't believe I just got scared of my own video. Okay. <laughs> They're also known as a wetland habitat specialist, which means that they need water-rich habitats like wetlands and mangroves, in order to survive. And this is very unlike other urban carnivores, which would enter a city just for a short period of time to hunt for food, look for mates, or just look for a new territory if they're being dispersed. And our fishing cats, again, unlike those species, live inside our city. And this is GPS collar data from one of the cats that we collared in 2015. He was actually the reason we found fishing cats in the city, and this map behind me is at Timbitigasi Aya. He was actually at the Savoy Cinema when they, were, um, when they were playing Monkey Kingdom when it first came out, so he went to watch it. So, we think that fishing cats and other urban wildlife are in Colombo because our wetlands are heavily interconnected. I shouldn't use the word heavily, actually. Sort of interconnected. Thanks to corridors, corridors meaning these big bushy areas that we see all over the place, um, paddy fields, of course our wetlands, canals, and even our backyards. All these areas, known as green spaces, are super important for these urban species because they provide them with food, shelter, and places to raise their babies. <clears throat> now, most of these species, I'm sure some of you all are probably like freaking out, thinking, oh my god, I'm going to have these wild animals in my backyard. But they actually play a very important part to us. For example, fishing cats, um, rat snakes, and jackal, and even this cute little Asian palm civet behind me, known as the uh, kalavada, the one in your roof that goes da 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 in the night. OK, so all of them are really important because they are great at pest control, rats. They love rats and rodents. Then our, um, then our saltwater crocodiles, scary looking things, but they will eat anything dead that's floating in the water. So insanely important in terms of keeping the water free from disease. And then we've got a single little dragonfly, very overlooked animal, 
A single dragonfly can eat 60 mosquitoes a day. So imagine having a swarm of 100 flying about. So Colombo's fishing cats are one of the reasons our wetlands came into the national and international stage. They're also a reason why a lot of people ended up paying attention to our wetlands, about their health and well-being. So that was pretty cool. I was very happy about that. And for those of us who work in wetlands every day and work with wildlife, these habitats are known as the lungs and the beating heart of our city. The green spaces that I spoke about earlier are known as the veins and the arteries. And together, they create a living, breathing organism that stretches throughout our urban landscape, basically. And this organism is not just important for the wildlife that I just mentioned, they're also important to us. And I can name lots and lots of ecosystem services, but I don't have time, I have six minutes left. Right? So I'm going to just talk about three. The first is, and I mentioned it before, flood control. Colombo's wetlands, if managed properly and cared for and loved, can absorb 60%, sorry, 40%, I'm really bad at math, right? 40% of Colombo's annual rainfall. And that's equivalent to about 27,000 Olympic-sized pools full of water. So that's a lot of water it's protecting us from. Number two, they lower something called ambient air temperature by one to two, per one to two degrees Celsius. And that reduces something called the urban island heat index. Basically put, the closer you are to concrete, the hotter it gets. The further you are from concrete, the cooler it gets. And I hope I stepped in the correct direction because I can't turn around and look, okay? <laughs> and all of you guys can test this out yourselves. Walk down Reed Avenue and then walk down Gall Road. And don't walk when it's raining, right? Walk at about 12 in the afternoon when the sun is out. You all will immediately notice the difference in temperature. And finally, number three. Simply put, being outdoors is good for you. It's good for all of us, it makes us happy, right? There's enough research out there saying that being out in nature, being out in wild spaces, calms you down. So it's good for not just physical health, and we see enough aunties and uncles walking down the walking tracks, right? But it's also really good for mental health. So for a very, very long time, I mentioned this several times, our wetlands were misunderstood, overlooked, nobody really cared about them. And let's face it, a lot of us didn't even learn about them in school. But it took a, w a wild cat that swims like a fish, looks like a little leopard, living in a city, and a parliament to go underwater for people to actually start to kind of wake up and realize, oh no, something needs to be done. And this is a great example for that. In 2020, the then government said that they were going to build a four-way elevated highway across the Talangama wetland, which is an environmental protected area, which is one of the highest protection statuses a habitat can get. And they wanted to build this to reduce traffic. Then, when this was kind of announced, the community in that area protested, they petitioned, they filed court cases, because they knew the value of these wetlands and the wildlife, and they knew what could happen if this was destroyed. And two weeks ago, I think, based on, I can't, or last week, the lawsuit was won. The Road Development Authority has announced that they will not be building this highway through Talangama, they will be looking for alternate routes. So 10 years ago, this would not have been possible. And this just shows community urban conservation from the ground up. And it's a great example for that. So now my takeaway from this is three things. Wetlands are cool, they're full of wildlife. Colombo is super duper biodiverse. Number two, we've got the fact that wetlands are really important for us in terms of our health and well-being. And then the third thing is something I want you guys to kind of remember and kind of take home. You don't need to be 
a biologist, a policymaker, a lawyer, a professional in this field to protect these wetlands. You yourself as a citizen of Colombo can go out there and show your interest and show your love and appreciation for these habitats that are protecting you every single day. And by visiting them and enjoying them and spreading the word and talking about them and getting more people to visit them, you just make it a little harder for policymakers to pave over them. So that's something I hope that all of you guys do over the next few weekends, maybe the next long weekend. And if anyone sees a fishing cat, please just drop me an email so that I can uh, mark it down because we are recording these things. So before I go, I brought a, brought a little friend just to say hello and a quick goodbye. So if anyone hears a duck quacking at like one in the morning, it's one of them. Thank you, and I've been wanting to say this for a very long time. Thank you for listening to my TEDx talk. Thanks. <laughs>